And we are live. Ascension Esports Phoenix League. We are about to get into some high quality League of Legends action. I'm your caster of the day, Desirux, followed by my co caster, DW the Doctor. How are you doing? Pretty good, and I'm actually really excited after seeing the fiesta of MSI. We finally get to see some cool, calm, and collected League of Legends here at Phoenix League. Yeah, about time, too. We've had many delays going on as there were some technical difficulties with the scheduling, especially considering we had the Challenger qualifiers that just went off. So after a long hiatus, we're finally back here with Phoenix League, and we're going to start off the day with Horizon Snow versus Super Deadly Killer Ninjas. Yeah, and as we, you know, head into uh, Champ Select right now, I'm excited to see what's going to be pick or band because, you know, we've had a couple patches since the last time we saw these teams, and there's been plenty of times to cook up some new strats. And we're going to get right into Champion Select. Now, Super Deadly Killer Ninjas versus yeah. Horizon Snow. What do you expect to see? Uh, nothing too crazy. Um, nothing these last couple weeks seems to have really stood out, um, like, champion-wise. Uh, we did see uh, Zaya and Rakan released, but I don't... I actually don't remember if they are legal this week. I'm gonna have to get clarification for you on that one. But, I do know that Galio is now enabled something that we ha have not seen in Phoenix League yet, and something that's an still really strong. An Hasn't really received any patch changes since the rework, but it it's something that I expected to see a lot of, and so far haven't. A silent death. But looking, looking at the bands, it seems pretty common. Camille, Kennen, the Kale is a little question mark, but I, it's something that we have seen banned in the LCS. Really? Who exactly is playing? What position are they playing, Caitlyn? Mid. It was Power of Evil who had it banned against him. Um, that was in the EU finals, or semis. We do. Semis, uh, third place match. Well, yeah. we'll figure with that one. Lee Sin banned out as well. Very popular champion to take for his early game power. Gives a lot in terms of early game map pressure. Does fall off late game, but is worth the cost if he can get him snowballing early. Not only that, you always have the Dragon Rage right. kick, which is so good at catching out somebody. If played correctly, it obviously can be played around, but sometimes suddenly there's a Lee Sin behind your to carry, and you don't really know how he got there. And with Caitlyn being the final ban for um, the blue side, I'm curious what their game plan is. Um, you know, they got rid of uh, Caitlyn, who kind of has a dominating factor in the bottom lane. They got rid of the Kennen, which also split pushes on top, bottom, middle, wherever the wherever you want to end up playing him. And the Camille also having just tons of maneuverability. But they decided to first pick Karma, even with the Lulu available. Well, it does provide for some oppressive lane matchups. Karma has very high base damage, and it's also a really good flex. Technically, you can take a top. Uh, mid and support are the most popular places to take it. But really, it, it provides a lot in terms of being unable to be read in what you're going to do with your composition. Yeah, it does leave every option available, um, but with Lulu being so strong right now and also being that mid-support flex pick, I, I do feel that it, as a first pick, that's the stronger of the two options. But, um, <coughs> excuse me. But, I mean, Karma still has a lot of uses, can be very effective in disengage comps along with engage comps. Um, just having that inner flame shield, just or not inner flame, the inspire shield is so clutch in getting you in and out of sticky situations. Um, Gragas, once again, another flex, can be in the jungle, can be in the top lane. Very, very effective currently as a big, beefy, tanky guy. Yeah, especially in the top lane. It's weird to actually see him back in the top lane. Uh, most likely, I'm going to expect this to be in the jungle. But as you were saying earlier, yeah, it's a very potent top pick, and 
One thing I'm kind of hoping to see is something else that's been growing in the meta for the top lane, and that's that teleport ignite fizz tank top. Please no. <laughs> um, fizz is such an anomaly that I, I just Riot seems to not understand what they want to do with fizz, but that's for another day. I do think it's going to be a jungle Gragas. Um, does very well into the Elise matchup, something that we spent an entire season watching. So I'm a little bored with that matchup, I guess is the word. <laughs> um, but we, we know exactly how they're going to play out. Both very early game gankers. They want to get in early. They want to get in often. And they are both so good at burning flashes and making repeat ganks that I, I expect a lot of action early on here. Yeah, and the composition drafted by Horizon Snow really speaks just a lot when it comes to action. You have the Ari, you have the Ezreal, you have the Elise, you have the Lulu. It's a very aggressive comp that can work early and it can work very well, especially when you get that level 6. The fact that Mark Boots so far is taking Ignite we could see some pretty big roam plays, especially considering the synergy of how well both Elise and Ari can move around the map. Yeah, and Ari, we've seen quite a few uh, different build paths coming out for her, and all of them doing really ki the thing of killing people very effectively. We've seen the Gunblade, we've seen the um, Namakon, and then we've also seen the... Um, uh, Negatron into Morello, um, all of which work very effectively. Heading into a Cassidy pick, though, I'm not quite sure what we're going to be seeing for the build path wise. And that, that be... is if this is a Cassidy, it could be a placeholder. Could be. I do doubt it a bit. If it is Cassidy, it's going to be a very hard laning phase early on. But, you know, you give up the laning phase in order to have a very potent level 6 and be able to just explore the map as much as you want, catch out people as much as you want. It's just such a mobile champion that can cause so much damage. Yeah, and I'm surprised that the Daily Ninjas went with a blind Renekton pick. Um, they didn't know who they were facing in that top lane, and they decided to go with one of the strongest snowballing top laners, and... They, they didn't know what they were going into, so now they're stuck in a Fiora matchup, and Fiora's just going to consistently outscale the Renekton unless the, the Fiora just gets absolutely trashed. Yeah, it's going to be very difficult for Cruncher to survive this lane, especially considering, as you were saying, the scaling of Fiora. But the big saving grace is Renekton hits his power spike pretty much at level 3 when he gets all his skills. He doesn't have that mana reliance. He's very sustaining when it comes to the lane matchup. He's going to be... He's not going to be in the worst position early, and if he could take advantage of that and make that lane work for him, he could be able to just stop the scaling and set up something to stop Moose Hater from going crazy in this game. Yeah, and the junglers are going to play a huge portion of that top lane. I mean, I mentioned that both of them very good at ganking early, very good at ganking often, and when it comes to that 2v2... Neither top laner really has a crazy, like, pre-level 6 survivability, like, trump card. Like, they both were in teleport, and so once those junglers get involved, neither one of them crazy tanky early on, neither one of them with the, like, the best escapes. They have escapes, but they're very conditional slash not that far. So if we get a cocoon early on or just a body slam, it's going to force a flash, especially pre-6, and it just completely opens you up for a repeat gank. So now this begs the question, who do you see winning this matchup based on their composition and why? Looking at the two team comps, I mean, they both do very similar things. Um, Renekton's going to want to try to abuse early, whereas Fiora is going to hang out for late game and try and split push. Um, both mid laners want to jump to the back line, kill the enemy carry, and then jump back out while they still have the supports to try and counter that. Um, things are going to get very sticky in the early game. Things are going to get very um, combative. I, I think we're going to see a lot of early game action. But when it comes down to it, I do think that Horizon Snow is going to pull out the win. Um, they have more scaling threats along with an equal or even better early game. 
And you know what? I'm going to have to agree with you on that one. The scaling threat of the Fiora is a big point of this game, and especially considering it can happen early, and Elise is is notorious for being a pretty good early game ganker as well as uh, just overall high damage dealer when it comes to jungling with that missing health damage. I do expect Moose Hater to get ahead in this lane, and I do expect Mark Boots to do really well on his lane as well. So I also have to give this game to Horizon Snow. I feel like they will take this one. But who knows? Things can change up. Horizon Snow do have a good record right now. They've only lost one game to Team Sky. Can the Super Deadly Killer Ninjas thwart that? We're going to find out soon enough. So we will be getting into game momentarily, getting right through the spectator delay. Then we shall finally be in game and get started on Phoenix League. Two week hiatus. Feels good to finally be back and see some high level League of Legends action. Yeah, I am hoping the teams give us some pretty quality highlight reels um, since they've had this much time to practice, recover mentally, um, try and get some new strats under their belts. Um, along with the patch change that came in, there's lots of things that have changed since these teams last met. And so we don't really know what's going to happen. We, I mean, these teams could be completely different from what we saw last time. Yeah, most definitely. But for those of you just joining us, this is Ascension Esports Phoenix League. This is an LCS style tournament with a regular season and playoffs for players in Diamond and above. But that's not our only league. We have leagues for all ELOs, Silver through Bronze. You can join our Dragon League and Gold through Plat. You can join our Elder League. If you're interested in joining, please check the links down below. Check out our Discord. Check out our subreddit. But it's time to get into game. It is Super Deadly Killer Ninjas versus Horizon Zero Snow, and we have an instant pause. Keep in mind, it is just Horizon Snow. There is no Zero. Desrox has just been playing a bit too much PlayStation. Did I say it again? Yes. Oh, goodness. A bit too much uh, PlayStation for Desrox. Hey, it's a good game, okay? I, I, I have been playing that game. It's a great game. Uh, yeah, I, it, I'm actually super jealous because I want to play it, but not enough to buy a PlayStation considering the only other game I have my eyes on would be Kingdom Hearts 3, and that's going to be multi-platform. Uh, I, I had Final Fantasy 15 on my eyes and couldn't resist it. Couldn't resist it. Shame, yeah. shame, shame. But, but now, are... that, now that Final Fantasy 15 is out, they can finally start making Kingdom Hearts 3, which is going to be way more important. Oh, come on. Man. Final Fantasy is a dead uh, series. Uh, don't hurt me like that. <laughs> They've been bad since seven. That is not even true. Okay, nine was great. <laughs> the They've only, been bad since ten. I'll give you that. <laughs> the only Final Fantasy game I have played was twelve. I think it's been a number of years since I played, but RPGs just aren't my style. I, I'm not a huge fan of RPGs. Ah, it's such a shame. Even though League of Legends is part RPG. No, it is a battle arena of the massive online res re uh, uh, variety. Resiety. Yes, yes, <sighs> but that style is composed of half strategy, half RPG, but we are out of the pause, which means we're getting into game now. So, what Super Deadly Killer Ninjas, Horizon what? Snow... <laughs> What part of League of Legends <laughs> is role-playing? Level does... up system. You have to farm. To you have to level up. Thing. You have to get into the game. What role are you playing? Do you, when you play Lulu, do you imagine that you're a little gnome child with voodoo powers? Or when you're playing Elise, do you imagine that you're a Zoan with that ate the spider spider fruit? Yes. All of the above. That's horrifying. I can't even imagine what a spider spider fruit would look like. 
I'm actually so, horrified. I can't believe I've brought this up. Yeah, I, I can't believe it either. Can't <laughs> believe I've done this. We are into game finally. Very standard spreads coming out of both teams. Nothing too special. Nothing out of the ordinary. We do see, however, a longsword start as well as three Minions pots most likely going for that Blade of the Ring King from Danny Cutebody. Yeah, and it, it's something that has actually kind of fallen out of favor. A lot of... Ooh. Yeah, we do see Charmer getting caught out quite a bit. Now Dinosaurus is the one taking the punishment. Now Char <laughs> Cruncher's caught. He has to burn his flash. He's ignited. And the charm oh. lands. That's first blood picked up by Mark Boots. So while he does get 400 gold for free, he has to start charm. And now he's in a bit of an awkward situation because he doesn't have time to go spend that 400 gold. He's going to hit level two first, though, which is good. So he'll he'll get a bit earlier where he can you know level up that orb of deception and not be as kind of sticky but having charm level one is not the best start unless unless you get first blood that kind of helps yeah that does help a lot but it was pretty much an easy decision cruncher already blew his flash so pretty easy charm to land and it resulted in a well-deserved first blood and not having to burn the second ignite means that Gonna have it earlier in this lane and could put Charmer now in a bit of a sticky situation. But having to burn TP and Flash, Cruncher now doesn't have any options. If he gets beat up in this early game, he's done for. And we do see the teams going back on fourth between TeamSpeak and Discord. And we all know TeamSpeak is horrible. Discord is the <laughs> superior void uh i'm gonna have to agree with you on that one i'm not the biggest fan of team speak but you know whatever works it works it's confusing and costs money therefore it's horrible it's so like buying game. a it's like buying a foreign car and having something break on it so the game's soon to unpause and it's unpaused yeah, now we're finally back in the game. And, and now things things really do get interesting. Um, we are going to see the junglers kind of start normal. Um, Gragas did go with the Raptor camp start, whereas um, Dinosaur went with the red buff start, which is a little bit easier on the Elise than, say, the Gragas. Um, by that, I mean skipping the Raptor camp. Um, at least not the best AoE level 1 jungler, because it, it just you don't have the power. But, whew, lots of damage going into Fist as well. Ooh, Mark Boots landing a very nice charm. And look at that. Cruncher doing pretty well in this lane so far, and this is what we're talking about. The early advantage that Cruncher has taking this Renekton into Fiora. Well, it's actually the other way around. Fiora was taken into the Renekton, but he needs to use that as much as possible early if he wants to get ahead. Now we do have a flash burnt as well as an ignite. FYS getting punished for getting too close. Yeah, Moose Hitter is not on the winning trades in this top lane either. Cruncher having the more sustain with the Cold of Me, and he's going to be a bit on the advantage even though he gave up that first blood. Oh, the Flash Cocoon whiffs, but it did burn the Flash of Charmer overall. Successful gank so far. Yeah, as a jungler, even if you burn your Flash, gaining the Flash is so worth it because it opens you up for repeat ganks. Now that there's no Flash on Charmer, he does have three more levels before he gets the Rift Walk. This opens up the, sh the, the, the lane for Dinosaur to walk back in and Cocoon once again. Yeah, and especially considering early, if Charmer is ganked again, oh, speaking of gank, here comes Dinosaurus going after Concern Support, Cocoon goes out, doesn't really get too much, Concern Support is able to get out alive, Danny Cubody trying to turn it around, close, close exchanges going from both teams. And what an almost disaster coming in for Horizon Snow, they kind of 
almost lost a 2v3 there. Uh, the Cocoon just barely not landing onto Concerned Support meant that was able to get out, get shields, and return damage. And they just kind of ignored Danny Cutebody, or, who just rained the damage on him. Oh, is Cruncher actually going to go for this? Takes out Moose Hater underneath his own tower. And Moose Hater knew that was coming. 100% knew that was coming. And now I'm not quite sure what Moose Hater is going for with a double Doran start on the Fiora. Um, we've been seeing lots of double Doran item starts with a lot of the AP style uh, top laners, uh, like the like the Galio, like the Nautilus. But we haven't really been seeing lots of Doran blade doubles. Yeah, Hello. actually, pretty right on that one. Um, usually, when you see the like the double top laners, they they almost have a cookie cutter build when it comes to tank top laners. I mean. And that's the, what, double Dorans into... Double Dorans with the occasional triple into um, the respective tank item, whether it's Spirit Visage or uh, Sunfire, usually Sunfire. Um, but if you're against, like, a Kennen, sometimes they'll pick up, like, a Spirit Visage. Um, I guess the thought process here, though, could be that the bonus health from the, um, the Dorange item plus the bonus sustain is what's going to try and keep most hater alive in those extended trades because like i was saying like they call them you can get so much sustain from that as the renekton that it makes it hard to really out push that especially when he can you know call an entire wave gets the wave clear and then gets the the sustain as well fiora doesn't really have anything like that intrinsically in her kit yeah and that's why this is pretty much a scaling matchup Moose Hater's still a ticking time bomb regardless of the situation, so it's gonna be an uphill battle for Cruncher, but he needs to tackle it sooner than later. I mean, having, you know, given up first blood just to come back into lane, get that one-on-one -on -one kill, that's important because now he he might be in Moose Hater's head a little bit. I mean, now that he's already got the solo kill, he, he has that much more pressure to do it again. And so now it's up to Dinosaurus and Axel to see who can change that around first, but we see Dinosaur hanging out around that bottom lane, knows that there's no flash on concern support, wants to get in there and cocoon someone. Yeah, he needs to get in there. He's not having the most effective early game, especially considering how badly that first gank in the bot lane turned out. But it gets... Yeah. You, you've got to take advantage of the early base damage Lee's has, as well as the missing health damage. And right now, they're making it pretty tough. Super Deadly Killer Ninjas doing a pretty good job at defending against this jungler. I mean, at least, at least there's no slouch in the damage department, um, even later on in the game. And if, you know, a, a Voidling were to land onto, say, Danny Cutebody, that can be impactful later on. Um... And I do like the uh, jungle item choice from Dinosaurus going with the Tracker's Knife. Um, bonus wards, always helpful. And Will wins not on the winning side here right now. Yeah, not at all. The base damage of Concern Support's Karma is really starting to show, especially with the Mantra in her flame. And that's something that's actually very hard to avoid because it does explode even without hitting something. So you have to be very conscious about where it's going to land and if it's going to be the uh, Mantrid one. Because if it's not the Mantrid one, you can always dodge it. We do have a fight breaking out in the top lane. Moose Hater versus Cruncher. He actually got the grand challenge. Got a lot of healing off on that. But Cruncher's still going to go after it. Here comes Dinosaurus oh. but can't save his teammate. Will he get the revenge kill? Almost drops for it, but here comes Axel. Oh, no. Axel throws the explosive cast and picks up the kill. That was a lot of almost disaster. I honestly didn't think Axel was going to get that kill there. Um, having to blow both the cast and the flash will actually be missing both of those for the next gank. Oh, and that calling forces the heal out of Will win. Lucian getting tons of damage early on now. Um, they did change around like a month, almost two months ago. 
Um, and at the same time, as the Blade of the Rune King changes, things for Lucian could not be better in reality. And I'm surprised we've seen so little of him, um, both in Phoenix League and professionally. But we do see Danny Cutebody going back to base, picking up that Cutlass, whereas Willwin kind of has to choke on the tier for a little while. Um, and now, something that we've actually seen a couple times is that Ezreal's will not pick up a, a Sheen item. And we see it happening once again here, going for that Vamp Scepter instead. And I'm still torn on it. I, I don't quite know if I agree with not getting a Sheen item on Ezreal's. Yeah, but in all fairness, Blade of the Rune King's really strong right now, which is, I'm 90% sure that's what he's going for. And it does proc on the Mystic Shot. Now we see a fight yeah, breaking I mean, out top lane. The ultimate used ooh. by Cruncher going after Moose Hater. Moose Hater has a grand challenge up. Can he make it happen? One more shot would do it, but he's able to escape with his life for the time being because Cruncher is still on the hunt, choosing not to chase it, waiting for a minion to take aggro, but it's only one minion, and it's not going to result in a kill. Very close there. And you're right, it, it is going to be a Blade of the Ring King Ezreal. But the last time we saw this, they just opted to go with no zeal item instead of picking it up um, third item. And it, it's just, it cuts out a lot of the power. And you can wait on the, the uh, Blade of the Rune King. You can go Cutlass and not have it be that impactful. You gain so much by the Trinity Force that it, it seems almost like a disservice to skip it. Yeah. I guess I can see where you're coming from on that one, especially considering you do get the mana and cooldown reduction from going Sheen first. So it does hurt a bit, but at the same time, he has been losing out in these trades in lane. Perhaps he does need the life still to be able to sustain. And it definitely helps. Oh. Yeah, it definitely helps when you have a Karma on the opposite end. Because uh, you just... Yeah. As a non-healing support, life's pretty rough for you. Because you have the Lulu who can shield quite a bit, but can't shield everything, and eventually something's going to get through. Yeah, especially considering the immense punishment Karma can put out. Paired up with Lucian, please, it's just a nightmare. True Shot Barrage coming out, but they can't really defend this turret. They have to fall back. They know that Axel's just there to get the turret. That was a pretty close turret race. Yeah, and I mean, you're short a hundred gold or a couple hundred gold by not getting first tower, but you get the mid tier one that opens this Ari up so much. And now that she can start roping, the only lane they can really or that they want to look at it's going to be this top lane. Because if you can get Moose Hater to start dominating this Fiora Renekton matchup, life is going to get so much hairier for the crocodile. And Cruncher able to dodge the Cocoon, which would have been certain death for him. Clutch play coming out. Yeah, they didn't have time for Mark Boots to show up. Um, once Moose Hater started diving into that triple minion wave, they kind of knew something was up. Charmer's going to walk over a ward, but I think he should have the damage. Arcane shipped away. Ooh, ooh. It's actually getting turned around. FYS using to use the Ignite on the Charmer. But he is a Cassidy, and Cassidy's love to just jump around. Moose Hater thought he had the advantage. Flashes out, though, once he saw Concerned Support shows up. And this is a good play coming out of the Deadly Ninjas. Ooh, here comes a play coming out of Horizon oh. Snow as Danny Cubebody runs critically low. Down goes Dinosaurus, Mark Boots. And Axel taking in a fight, but FYS is the equalizer of this fight. Here comes concerned support, though, looking to get the snare on the Mark Boots. Narc Boots is stunned up and drops! An overall net win for the super deadly killer ninjas. Now, how much damage can they get on this tower? There's still so many people here on both sides. It's not looking like they're gonna get much, though. They do get a gold lead, though, at the bare minimum. And onto some pretty impactful champions. I mean, they were able to get another kill on the Renekton, now being able to complete his Black Cleaver. 
that's pretty big power spike right there. And now he can try and match up with the Fiora a bit better for now. Fiora finally getting some wave clear though could put an awkward situation onto Crunchy. We already see the split push coming into effect a little bit. Moose haters in this bottom lane pushing that tier 1 tower. And they have to send the jungler to respond to it, which isn't going to be the best. Um, but with TP advantage quickly coming up for um, Horizon Snow, they're, they're going to have the option to make a play soon. Yeah, and that TP can be very critical at high levels. It really influences the macro game, and that's pretty much a given. If Moose Hater can do the split push and can drag either member down, if they can make a TP play, especially around an objective, it can work wonders for them. But with Dragon being down, not many opportunities to make that type of play. In 50 seconds, Dragon does come back alive, so it's it seems a little weird to have the current setup that Horizon Snow has. They have their TP-less mid laner who is ahead on the opposite side of the map and in zero chance to respond quickly. Um, it is being matched by the TP-less Charmer currently, so they're trying to keep that matchup. They do think Charm is going to win it eventually. But right now, neither side really has the response for the dragon. Whereas, like like I said, Moose Hater now has TP. Cruncher, just a couple seconds behind. I thought his cooldown was a bit longer, though. Let's see, it looks like they're starting to rotate both teams, for that matter of fact. And there's the Coon onto Danny Q body. Look oh. at the damage inflicted! Dinosaurus wants his head, but is unable to get it. Will Win takes it instead. Now Dinosaurus a little bit too deep, flashes away, but Cruncher is here to crunch onto Dinosaurus, and down he goes as Charmer takes him instead. And overall, that is one for one on both sides. It is jungler for AD carry though, and with the dragon live, there could be a maybe play coming in from the Deadly Ninjas, but if Cruncher does get caught out here... Cruncher's looking to do the catching instead. Yeah, and that Gunblade Ari is doing pretty well right now. It, it was able to stop the engagement there. Cruncher did not have the option to go in. Could have flashed, but maybe wants to save that for the actual dragon fight. And it's surprising that a dragon rotation didn't go off just yet. It was a pretty even trade, but now FYS caught out, gets chunked out by Concern Support. Concern Support is now the low health one. Ignited, but lives for now. Down goes Mark Boots instead. And that's just unlucky. So many shields coming out of the Karma, and the damage is pretty high as well there too. And with another Cocoon going wide, things are looking shaky. Yeah, and here comes the teleport out of Cruncher. Dinosaurus really low, having to repel over to the blue buff, but that should be Dragon. And a Mountain Drake, a very valuable one to have, picked up by the Super Deadly Killer Ninjas. Yeah, and these teams both picking up Dragon is very effective for their sides. An Inferno Drake on the Horizon Snow team means that that Fiora is going to win those 1v1s with Cruncher that much harder, that these team fights are going to be that much swingier. Whereas that Earth Dragon opens up that Cassid and Split Push so heavy because once he gets to that tower, he's going to be able to put down massive damage on it, especially with this second item, Lich Bane. Yeah, now that you mentioned that, it kind of reminds me of the old... When, when, when was it? I forgot, it was X Pecky's back door with a Cassidy. Season one of, two. Yeah, one of the nastiest uses. It was IEM. It was IEM, technically. So I don't know. It was technically in between a season anyway. Yeah, this looks but... terrible for Moose Hater. He's caught out. Charmer's in Ooh. just waiting to try and pick up something, but Cruncher, greedy as he is, wants that kill all to himself. And this is kind of what we talked about. This Renekton's gonna have that early game. He got even a bit, um, he took advantage of it. He got that first, he, not the first blood, he gave first blood. But he got the solo kill onto Moose Hater, just staring him down under tower. And since then it hasn't, it's been the Renekton lane. 
So what we thought might have been, you know, a bad particular showing, giving up that first blood, he's turned it around enough that he's now in complete control of this lane. Yeah, and a lot of that stems from just taking advantage of the early power that Renekton offers. And he's just not letting that go. Charmer going after Mark Boots in the bot lane. Looking to chase down Mark Boots. Mark Boots using the Spirit Rush to get over the wall, but Charmer is on the hunt. He wants Mark Boots. Can't get close enough. Gets hit by the charm. Can Mark Boots turn this around? Chooses not to as Charmer backs off. Yeah, that first charm in the lane going a bit wide gave the signal for Charmer to just follow up on that. Once he didn't get that second slow, once they both went over the wall though, that he kind of knew that was when he should back off. The charm just sealing the deal there. So pretty good trade there. And that's what the Deadly Ninjas are looking for there. They're looking for Charmer to start winning that, land, that 1v1. Body slam flash almost gets will win, able to flash over the wall just in time. Yeah, and getting caught by the, the Gragas Body Slam is such a terrifying event for anybody, really. Instantly forces that flash, but it kept him alive. So, so far, a 5k gold lead separates these teams as the Super Deadly Killer Ninjas are ahead in the game so far. Up 3-1 to one in Towers. Looking pretty good in this fight, and as we we're talking earlier, Cruncher winning out his lane surprisingly in the 1v1, as well as Charmer 201. There's a lot of scary sources of damage on the Super Deadly Killer Ninjas. Now Charmer gets charmed by Mark Boots. There's a fight going on. Charmer wants to win this one, but with backup around the corner from Dinosaurus, he has to evade that fight. Mark Boots did. Um dash back into the lane instead of towards the enemy tower which meant that the flash rift walk coming out of charma gained enough distance that he wasn't in danger of being damaged any further there it's an interesting lane there because i mentioned that charma was starting to win that 1v1 but when he rift walks blind into a bush into a charm it's kind of hard to win that trade now that it's already happened it's in his name though it's it's charmer <laughs> He wants the charms. I mean, eventually, yeah, he's going to because that means he can go in. Once that charm fades off, gives him free free reign to do whatever he wants because he doesn't have to worry about getting tagged up. He can jump in, yeah. he, can, he can jump out, and he's going to start hitting a point where his magic shield blocks a lot. It already blocks a lot. Uh, I like how you turned my pun into technical analysis. You, you, you get a lot of props for that one, Doc. Uh, it's practice. There's a lot of puns involved in my life, and it's been like that for a few years now. So it, it's it, it's one of those uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Curses of being me. Living a life of puns. And look at this setup coming from the Super Deadly Killer Ninjas. Looking to bait something out. They're trying to get onto Moose Hater. Moose Hater oh. able to jump away. Safe for now. Good repost there. Means that he doesn't get body slammed into combo. And then having the Blast Cone there means he gets out safely. Um, and, and things are getting a little difficult now. Bear, er, bear. Dragons in 45 seconds. There is TP available for both top laners and the mid laner of the Super Deadly Killer Ninjas. Lichbane's now completed. Charmer is very scary right now. Mark Boots not able to finish that second item just yet, but this next dragon being an ocean dragon, not crazy important, but this is cheap. This is very cheeky. A Baron call coming out from Super Deadly Killer Ninjas is spotted out by a ward of FYS. Moose Hater will look to teleport really soon, as well as Charmer. They both have their TPs up. A lot of pressure on this Baron, though. It's falling critically low. Ooh. Will he get the steel? Dinosaurus gets oh. mounted! And conserve support, as well as Axel doing a lot of work. Charmer is caught out by Moose Hater. The fight has come to an end but overall a net win for the super deadly killer ninjas as they pick up baron yeah taking baron and only losing your support so far that is massive 
The support really doesn't need the Baron. It shouldn't be solo pushing at any circumstance. But Charmer, even though he lost that 1v1 with Moose Hater, will now have the pushing advantage, and there's nothing Moose Hater can currently do about it, other than just kill him. But that's gonna be tough. Yeah, and Charmer doing a very suicidal play. If we took a look at the bottom lane, Charmer was doing everything he could to prevent Moose Hater from going for a teleport. Oh, okay, here we go again. Charmer doesn't have any way to physically stop it. He has to just try and kill Moose Hater before the TP goes there. And the TP is on cooldown right now, as well as Charmer's. But I mean, he doesn't really need to stop it. The big thing is just chunking in that damage, especially considering he has a Lich Bane, he has a Rod of Ages. He can do a lot and make Moose Hater appear there with the slither of health to be a free mill. Yeah, if Moose Hater TPs in after having taken a combo from Charmer, it's not going to be a good fight. We see a fight breaking out right now. It looks like Cruncher's going to go down, but no, he manages to survive. Concerned support takes one down, throwing out the inner flame. Charter over the wall, grabs will win. FYS in the target next. Double kill picked up by Charmer. This Cassidan has now popped off. Hit his second item spike, max his rod of ages, is now just running rampant in these team fights, and there's no answer coming back. There is no tank on the side of Horizon Snow. They don't have anything that can stand up to this champion. Yeah, as you're saying, no tank. That's the biggest point to bring through. No one is able to be able to tank the damage that Charmer is doing. Considering he's 4-0-1, there's going to be a lot of it. Yeah, and when you're looking at the team, we see Cruncher picking up a third item Guardian Angel after already completing his Titanic Hydra and his Black Cleaver. 4-2-4. Did burn the TP there to get the inhibitor. But what, what do they do to stop him? There really isn't anything. I mean, Moose Hater might be able to win a 1v1 once, but twice? That's going to be tough. Yeah, it's going to be very tough, especially considering, like, if we compare the gold, 10.3k to Moose Hater's 8.5. Charmer doing so well, outscaling both the mid, the top... Pretty much the in everyone. He's the wealthiest person in this game right now. Yeah, I mean, four kills, 203 CS, a five turret, you know, well-being backing him. It's almost like he just asked for a small loan of a million dollars and got it. <laughs> that good credit score. Yeah. That's I mean, all you we need. Can, yeah, we can see here how big of a boost that gave him. Uh... You know, sitting at two and a half items, going to be getting that uh, Zonia's super quickly. And once that's completed, he has free reign to do whatever he wants in this game. Split push, got it. Wins that 1v1. Team fight, got it. Can get in, get out, and stay in with that Zonia's if he wants to. And we're seeing Moose Hater right now trying to, trying to box Axel and it's actually losing. Axel, the Fiora top laner, is losing to the enemy jungler. Yeah, they need to be careful about this. And this just shows you the global wealth that this team has been able to acquire. And the split push coming out of Charmer is just making it that much harder for Horizon Snow to do anything in this game. Baron has fallen off, so they do have a bit more stalling power available to them. But Charmer just threw the super minions into the base, and now once the response comes in, they're tanky enough with the Gragas, with the Renekton, that they can just tank up the tower. They don't even need minions. Yeah, and it looks like Horizon Snow is on track to lose their second game. Once undefeated, did really well going to a match against the also undefeated Team Sky. Now looking to fall off a little bit as the Super Deadly Killer Ninjas put on a pretty good show in this game. Yeah, and since it, you know, we talked earlier, it's been two weeks, there's been a patch change, lots of things have happened. We didn't know what kind of shape these teams are going to be coming in on. 
We don't know how much practice they've had. We, they don't know, we don't know how they've adapted to these patches. Maybe this isn't a Horizon Snow patch. Maybe this, the meta shifted away from them. But they, they had what seems to be the scaling comp. They had the Fiora, they have the Ezreal, they have the Ari, all of which are pretty decent scaling threats, especially when backed by a Lulu. But it seems right now that maybe having not drafted a tank, they weren't expecting the Deadly Ninjas to get such an early pop-off. Yeah, I, I don't think anyone was really expecting it. Like, they took the Fiora into the Renekton with full faith that Moose Hater would eventually just outscale Cruncher. And yet Cruncher's dom just, he just dominated that lane. Not Dude. only that... They got first blood off of Cruncher, and they got it onto the mid laner of the Ari of all people. Speaking of Cruncher going into a fight with Moose Hater once again, and look at that chunk of health he just took from Moose Hater. Moose Hater just cannot respond to it, even having two items. The life steal is not enough, and the damage coming out between that Black Cleaver and the Titanic Hydra is so hard to deal with. There's not many champions that will even ever be able to deal with it. Ooh, and we do see the Koran challenge is out as Moose Hater tries to take on Cruncher. The stun doesn't hit, and now this looks bad for both sides. The heal going off, Grand Challenge heals up Moose Hater a lot, and there's a redemption giving a good chunk of health back, and another redemption to heal Moose Hater. Now, how is this fight going to break out? It's very tense for Crew Cruncher, as he does need to take him out inside, because here comes reinforcements. The good old 3v1 the top laner. But they do end up losing the dragon, and losing an Infernal Drake might have just sealed the deal. I mean, we're already seeing that there's too much damage for Horizon Snow to deal with. Combo that with some bonus percentage on top of it? That's rough. That's hard to deal with in an already hard game. Yeah, most definitely. And they're finally able to take down Cruncher, especially through his Garden Angel. Which, at this point... This is pretty much their game plan. If you can't beat them, outnumber them. And this is what they have to do in order to win the game. They have to stall out the game and only take fights if they can outnumber it. And they have to do that a lot. I mean, yeah, they're only down seven kills, but it's seven kills on people that really make a difference. Four kills on the Renekton, four kills on the Cassidy. Yeah, three kills on the support. Karma are a little wonky. But it, it, it's, it matters. She was able to get the redemption quicker. Has that Ardent Sensor. Has a lot of these utility tools that maybe the Silver just don't quite get to later. We still see that uh, Fizz is still on just the redemption. Doesn't have that, that um, third item that can be so impactful. Yeah, so it looks like we're going to get into a Baron Dance. And this is going to be pretty tense for Horizon Snow. This might be make or break for them. Yeah, and with such a slow scaling Ezreal right now, it's hard to imagine them winning a 5v5. They're playing this well so far, but Mark Boots is caught out, running critically low, able to Spirit Rush out of danger just in time. And now there's a lot of pressure coming out of this Fiora. Maybe a bit of a map misplay coming in right now. Yeah, this is a really big misplay, actually. They're not even going onto the Baron just yet. They have to decide on something and choose it quickly because they they just lost two towers for nothing. And Here we go, the fight. It's an engage. Yeah, the fight is on. They managed to catch out Dinosaurus flashing over the wall. Great use of the flash, but it's not enough. Moose Hater is now in, and he's in the middle of three people as he drops a Crew Cruncher. Charmer has to flash over the wall to survive, will win, but that is two down on the side of Horizon Snow, and that should be the Baron. Horizon Snow thought they had the game in their brain. They were like, oh, we just outsmarted them. We got two towers for zero. We forced two members to go back to base. Let's get this team play. Let's get this 5v3 team fight. And they completely forgot about the counter TPs. Cruncher came in. Charmer came in. And all of a sudden, it's an actual 5v5 after your jungler's already been thrown into the middle of the enemy three members. 
your jungler gets instantly taken out of the fight. Your uh, top laner pretty quickly gets taken out of the fight. And once those two are gone, what's left? Mark Boots. However, Charmer came in at the perfect time, catches him completely out, blows him up to near infinitum, forces the flash out, and then once that happens, there's nothing left for you. Ooh, we do see a fight breaking out, a catch on the Danny Q buddy. He manages to escape for now, but a good disengage coming out from the super deadly killer ninjas. And they have a second, a literal second to breathe right now. Their inhibitor is still alive. Baron is not the biggest factor at this very second because everybody's going back to base, spending their gold, picking up a couple more items. And now Horizon Snow can think for a second. They don't have anybody immediately bearing down on them. They know Baron's a thing, but they have a chance to breathe. They, they can now take a look at the items, take a look at what they have, and try and figure out a game plan to bring it a bit more into their favor. They know they can't fight. They know they have to go back to the split push, but now what do they split push? They already got tier two in the bottom lane. They know they're going to be having someone in the middle lane push against them for that open inhibitor. And the top lane would be the next logical choice for the next minute. Once it comes down to that 30 seconds till Dragon, we're going to see Cruncher maybe transition down to that bottom lane unless they force this top lane fight. Yeah, and this, it comes down to a game of stalling and trying to utilize that split push very, very carefully. Right now, there isn't a teleport on Moose Hater, so there is an advantage coming in for the Super Deadly Killer Ninjas. As we've seen it before, Cruncher can do a lot of damage to Moose Hater and do it very quickly. Yeah, and this tower takes so much damage from this Lucian. Does get in there, gets a couple shots, uses that Earth Drake. And if Charmer ever gets near this tower, he's going to be able to one-shot it at this point. A lot of tension in this siege. Does look like on the next wave it should be successful. And they kind of need it to be. Baron's running out. If they can't get a tower out of it, then all they did was take it away from Horizon Snow. Look, they do have a chance for a 5v4 as Cruncher doesn't have teleport. He's going to have to walk all the way up. And we do see Charmer trying to make something work in this mid lane. Wants that open inhibitor. He does have to try and fight through Moose Hater, who is oh. putting down the damage. Oh, but Moose Hater is no longer in a 1v1. He's getting caught out. Moose Hater melting tick. Tick. Goodbye, oh. Charmer takes him out, and now a team fight in the top lane. Redemption goes out, able to give a lot of healing to the super deadly killer ninjas. Mark Boots should go down next as Cruncher takes him down, but that's an exposed inhibitor. And now a lot of pressure for Horizon Snow. That is probably game. They still have Baron on their jungler for a couple seconds more. They do have two inhibitors going down. They could decide to push in for this or fall back and try and get that Elder Drake. They have 30 seconds on both solo laners of Horizon Snow. But it's looking like they want the W. Yeah, this is a very risky move to decide to go for. They we'll are getting chunked out quite a bit. Will Win has had some time to scale. He's starting to actually do a bit of damage, completed his Trinity Force, has a Last Whisper now. The numbers are getting to double digits from him, but it's still a little bit sticky. I mean, they were able to get a Nexus Tower still, even in what seemed like a situation they might maybe not have should have. Is that an Elder Drake call? It is an Elder Drake. Wow. Oh, gonna... That's bold, actually. I didn't think they were doing it. But Dinosaurus wants this dragon for himself. They only have that one Infernal Drake, though. And they really need this as a denial. TP coming in from Cruncher. Axel's over the wall. Yeah, we are going to see a fight break out. Axel gets caught and mounted! Oh. And that's a 4v5 advantage that they have now. This Elder Drake goes to Team Horizon Snow. And 
Axel was just the target of all of her eyes and snow's ire. The TP came in behind them and they just kind of focused on the jungler. They knew once Axel was out of the picture, they should nine times out of ten get that Elder Drake unless they all die. But they knew that the enemy team wasn't in a throwing thought of mind. <laughs> Mark Boots, you gotta be careful. Charmer actually has to be more careful as he underestimates Mark's Boots' damage a little bit. Yeah, Mark Boots is very high on these damage charts right now. Is an Ari, does have two kills, is working his way through his build path, and with the um, essential two Infernal Drakes backing him, that's a lot of damage. Yeah, especially considering the Elder Drake, a very bold play coming out. And it worked. That, that's what I like to see. Bold plays that, you know, you shouldn't normally see work, but they do manage to work out. And now it gives Horizon Stone more time to stall. If Moose Hater can pick up a GA or something maybe even more tanky-ish, something that can, you know, help him in that 1v1, we might be able to see something more. But this Baron fight could could be the end. We could see the game end in 15 seconds. Yeah, I mean, one more fight can just outright end this game. And more specifically, lose Horizon Snow the game. I think it still takes more than just a Baron fight for the Super Deadly Killer Ninjas to lose. But we are pretty deep on the Death Timers. The Baron call is made. And it'd be wise for Horizon Snow to not actually try and contest this. Yeah, it's going down very quickly. True Shot Barrage Ooh. comes in, not nearly enough. I saw it go down to 31 HP. I don't know from what, but very close play. But with Elder Drake just about over, this is now a very scary spot for Horizon Snow. There's only one lane left that needs to be pushed in by uh, the ninjas. They, they can just hang out in this bottom lane and let the minions do everything for them. Yeah, and Horizon Snow, if they can, they really need the stall to continue. If they're able to get, like, nine more minutes, they can actually just equalize the gold based off items. But it's a very hard task for them, especially considering the pressure that the Super Deadly Killer Ninjas have been putting on and having those two inhibitors down. But there is a bush kick and oh. shot down onto Charmer! And now the fight is on Cruncher in the middle of this. They don't have a front line, so they need to be careful about the way they fight this. And there's the explosive cask onto Mark Boots, drops to Danny Q, buddy. A cocoon stops him from proceeding anymore. And that is a one for one exchange. It is mid laner for mid laner though, and that Ari was a large portion of Horizon Snow's damage. Without that there, I don't know what's left for them. They could just outright lose the game here. There's only one Nexus Tower left. Ooh, and we're getting into one final fight. Guardian Angel instantly popped. Concern support, the target of Will Win. Unable to get him, but Cruncher flashing over the wall. Barely able to survive. But there goes Moose and he takes out Cruncher. Now he's after Axisol. Axisol, the target of three members of Horizon Snow. They choose to back off as the minions are overflowing the base. There, is, there was double life steal on Moose Hater, so once he was able to get over that wall, healed up off the wolf camp, but there was no more pressure going in them. They already had super minions in their base, knocking on those towers. The inhibitors are live once again in the opposite two lanes, so they do survive to fight another day for now. Uh, for now, and it's a breath of fresh air for them. They were able to just get a net win out of that fight, and especially having Cruncher's Guardian Angels down, that's actually huge. That buys a lot of time and it buys a lot of ability to be able to fight these fights without having to worry about killing anyone off twice. Yeah, I do expect maybe... Uh, I was going to say I expect one or two more maybe coming in. The only person with room left, though, is Gragas. But t both TPs are being burned here. They want this game to end. Yeah, more yep. like they need this game to end because the scaling is starting to take effect. We do see the grand challenge go down once again. Yeah, we do have a fight so far, but Moose Hater choosing to back off. He's critically low, and Daddy oh. Pew Body picks him up. That's two down, and this should be the end of the game as Cruncher 
able to survive critically low, but the base is so exposed. We're going to see inhibitors drop left and right or possibly a Nexus outright all together. And what a great display to take out the second place team. Super deadly killer ninjas. What a great job. Maybe there's still things happening. Ooh, and Cruncher runs into the middle, drops, but Danny Q body is open season for him as he takes out two members as well as the Nexus. And what an explosive end to that game there. Really at that end, I didn't know what was gonna happen. We looked like the ninjas were just walking away from that Nexus. They you know, they might not have thought they had what it took to put that stamp down there. But in the end, they're able to pick it up. They do get that W. They only had to take down a few more kills under their belt to make it happen. Ooh, and what a crazy game. I did not expect the Super Deadly Killer Ninjas to just do that well and take it to the second place team. Yeah, that was actually very surprising. And that's what I, I don't always like to see big hiatuses happen. But when they do, it's almost always for the better. It gives the teams so much more time to regroup and think of new plans, work on some synergies that they might not have. These seasons are typically pretty short. They're typically only five weeks long before playoffs. And so it doesn't always give the teams the best time to mesh, but now we gave, it, we gave an additional two weeks of practice time and it clearly worked for the ninjas. And I want you to take a look at these damage charts. Goodness gracious, Horizon Snow winning out by a lot, just not winning the game. And it's a little skew. There were no tanks on Horizon Snow, so all of their health totals were very low. Uh, I don't believe anybody really would have broken 3000 HP at all on the Horizon Snow side, whereas on the ninjas you had Renekton building HP. You had Gragas building HP. Even Cassidy had a Roa, which is a few hundred HP. All of them had so much HP to give for their team and then some. And we saw it happen. Um, and that's why we get these kind of inflated damage charts from the ninjas. Because while, yes, we see Ezreal doing 44,000 damage, only four kills. Yeah. It's just a rough game for them overall um this hiatus the one thing you mentioned could be the thing that has thrown off their ability to actually play cohesively of as as a unit but you never know maybe the super deadly killing inches were just that good we will have to find out because as we head into the break guys we're going to be coming back for one more game it is going to be the ninjas once again but this time they're facing up against syndicate so we are going to find out if this was a lucky break from the ninjas or if they actually came together and can consistently be taking these games yeah, so on that note, we will head to break and we'll see you guys right after the break as we get into the Super Deadly Killer Ninjas versus Syndicate. See you soon.